All right, we are back to talk the valley after like going crazy on the VPR. Girl, VPR. I'm just like, <laughs> but I'm just so over it. Yeah, like I've hit my limit of VPR, and in particular, Lala. Like I just had to get it out. Thank you for indulging me. If you yeah. watched that video or if you listened to the podcast before this, thank you. Thank you. But now I'm ready to talk the valley. We've only got two more episodes. This is one of those episodes. Is my hair okay? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> looks great. Um, and before we get into it, there are a couple of newsworthy items that we have to discuss first and foremost. Apparently, Jax Taylor, who is currently separated from Brittany Yuck Yuck <laughs> Cartwright. <laughs> yuck Yuck has stepped out like in front of other people in public with a new woman. Uh Someone who I think is like 20 years his junior. She's got (laughs) big old titties now. She's got boobies. They're right out here. She's a fancy, beautiful, sexy woman. And I think he's doing a soft launch. I think he's in a relationship. I think they're going to divorce. Oh my God. I just can't with these men on Bravo. They're like the worst. They are. They're bad. And I don't toxic. understand why all these 40-something-year-old men got to go after these 20-something-year-old girls. I'm like, you are crazy. Do you think a 40-year-old woman would put up with Jax Taylor? Absolutely not. I mean, maybe Sheena Shea if she's got no <laughs> backbone and she's got no personality maybe. of her own. But do you think there's a 40-year-old woman who's fucking lived some life, has some lived experience, has a fucking job, is no. probably divorced, would put up with his nasty ass apps? You've got to be a zygote in order to say yes to that man. I guess, but I'm essentially a zygote. I'm yep. 27 and mm-hmm. I would never never but i guess it's because i'm so enlightened. you are advanced i'm so advanced You're very enlightened i'm level five consciousness that's right not everybody can be like you in <laughs> generation z babe <laughs> i'm not generation kind z. of are you're on the cusp i kind of am yeah but yeah so he's out with somebody new and we all been knowing we this, all been honey. knowing we knew that Jax taylor did not find britney's post baby body attractive no. he is a hateful son of a gun and he will not miss an opportunity to degrade her and belittle her and put her down behind closed doors and in front of them rotten heel so, rotten heel <laughs> so like he's moving on I mean, he's getting his pencil wit with some new girl who just wants to be out there for the clout because that's crazy. How else Puh. would you be Pathetic. with Jax Taylor? Dude, he's going to be in God. his 50s. He's going to be still single. He's going to be like Leonardo DiCaprio. He's going to have like a age cap. Mm-hmm. If you're over 25, you're out. Like he's well, going to be like Leo that. Well, but Leo can get away with it I guess. because he's a um, billionaire. Oh. Like he's very 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 rich Jax taylor and his non-investment in jax's <laughs> sports bar he ain't rich like that honey no he ain't rich the at all. only reason he's pulling anybody is because of his affiliation with the valley and vanderpump rules oh, and totally. so that's the only reason this young woman is with him but he's a terrible person he's he makes awful. a terrible partner and like i can't believe it i can't either it's really weird maybe he's got a big old dick i don't know Ugh, but i God. can't herpes stds hpv uh uh-uh oh dirty dirty dick yep the other thing is that valley is renewed for season two and it just came out i think it was like the bravo producers or whatever saying that no new cast members are going to be on it especially not from vpr so it's confirmed i'm so glad because we were worried we were that it was going to be lala and sheena both of whom have purchased homes in the valley and have kids yeah And so it would seem on paper like a perfect match to bring those girls on over to the Valley, especially since VPR imploded in the last season. But the fact that they're not bringing them on. Thank God. Is so fantastic. And I know Alex Baskin, who is the executive producer, has said like, yeah, we just got way too many people. Like we've got storylines. We've got couples. They're already established. We don't need anybody else, at least not right now. Thank God. Yep. I did not want to see Lala or Sheena Shea on the Valley. No. We do not need more of them. I'm just still salty that we're not getting a reunion for the Valley. Yep. And everybody's bitching about it online and on the Reddits and the Bravo producers don't give a shit. And we've been bitching about it for literal weeks. Yep. It's not like you couldn't have cobbled together some live on Watch What Happens live fucking reunion. Or a and Skype. Just, yeah, something. God. For a half an hour, like ask some actual questions, but nope. Nope. We're not going to get any of that, unfortunately. What are we, chop liver? I mean, because there have been so many lies told. There are people getting away with a magnitude of shit, i.e. Janet. Yeah. People who have been throwing stones and hiding their hands. And those people need to be called out. And if you're not going to have that happen in the next episode, I'm going to be hurt in my butt but oh, hurt yeah. i'll be butt hurt about that <laughs> for real me too but it looks like from the preview we might get a little bit of confrontation 
I, I hope, hope so. Unless they're going to do us dirty like Seeking Sister Wife. Yeah. And show us a preview for something that we're not going to actually see. Yeah. I hate that shit. I hate that too. But let's get into the episode. Okay. We're on season one, episode 11, entitled Dark Side Danny. Oh my God. Danny started drinking that brown liquor. He drank. He's drinking brown liquor and he put on a wig and he got persnickety with his beautiful wife, Nia. Girl. And that was very interesting to very see very interesting i was like oh mm, it's tasty show me very, more mm, uh, Danny. well we start with the episode with like the girls are kind of back at the villa the guys are out on a boat getting drunk getting fucking plastered fishing and being crazy mm -hmm. but we have Brittany and nia kind of talking about like her marriage right and whether Jack's apologized, which we all saw that he did mm -hmm. in the last episode. And he is just kind of checking in with Brittany, like, are you okay? And Brittany's like, yeah, like, this is just kind of what Jax does. And it's unfortunate, but this is what I have to put up with. And it's sad. And it's very sad. You know, it's like having a fight in front of all of your friends. And your friends have seen it a million times before. Your friends have tried to do an intervention before, but, like, you're still trapped. Yeah. In the closet with R. Kelly. Oh, God. With seriously. Jax Taylor. And, like, Nia doesn't probably know how to help her. No, not at all. And then we also have Brittany and Michelle kind of talking, yes. too. But more about Michelle and Jesse's shamble of a marriage. Yes. This is where Michelle's straight up being like, yeah, if anybody's going to leave, it's going to have to be me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to be the bad guy. Right. Which we know. Yeah. And so she's wrestling with that. And I can sympathize with that. Yeah. Um, because I know she doesn't want to have to hurt Jesse, but she is so over it. Stick a fork in her. She is done. And she talks about how she's not attracted to him at all. There is nothing that he can do that would make her be attracted to him. Like she is past the point of that. She's probably revolted by him. Oh, totally. His touch probably nauseates her. She goes on to have sex with him the very next day. I we'll know. get there. But like she's just over jesse and so she's finally saying it on camera she's yeah. probably been telling these girls that for a while yeah but she's like yeah we're we're about to, we're about to do this thing i kind of felt for her because nobody really wants to be the one that breaks up with somebody like that's always a hard thing to do especially in a marriage when you have a kid like that's shitty and like jesse's the type of guy like we talked about last week with Jax taylor like they're the types of dudes that would never get divorced because it would hurt their pride and it would hurt their ego to have to be a divorced man or say that their wives left them so they're gonna stay in miserable marriages and continue to be assholes thinking that their wives will put up with it but michelle She's an independent woman. She's fucking Quentin Tarantino or mm -hmm. somebody. She some got a fancy man. director. She got a man. She got a man. She got somebody who's dicking her down. Oh, you could, yeah. I could just see it on her face. She's totally. so checked out and she's like thinking about somebody else and she's already gone. I'm sorry, Jesse, but that girl is already gone. Oh, for sure. And then we have the guys on the boat and Jesse's kind of talking about his marriage with Michelle. And he's like, yeah, we're working on it. Uh, I'm like, I know. God. Right on the heels of her talking about dumping him and Yikes. knowing she's going to look like the bad guy. And yeah. So Jesse in this moment, because something changes just overnight, I think. Yeah. But Jesse in this moment thinks that Michelle is on the same page and they are actually working to mm -hmm. rebuild their marriage. But like, mm -mm, it's not going to happen, Jesse. Sorry. It's pretty embarrassing to see. And I feel bad for him a little bit. Like, even though I hate Jesse, yes. I do feel bad for him as a human being that he has to sit here and say, on camera yeah i think we're doing good i think we're gonna work on it like i know she hates me but like we're taking it day by day it's gonna be fine <laughs> and then it's like michelle being like yeah i'm over it i'm sending my titty pics to yeah some hot guys that's and right it's fine well but you can see how he probably walks away from this season feeling like he looks like a fool mm -hmm. and she played him for a fool and that yeah. she embarrassed the fuck out of him because he's fucking taking ayahuasca <laughs> he's like going to spiritual retreats he's talking about his feelings with other bros like he's really trying out here and she is checked out and so he's gonna look like a dummy the sacrifices i've made to, to love, love you, you. The <laughs> <laughs> literally he's gonna feel that it's so sad but you know it couldn't have happened to a better guy i know <laughs> he's odious he's terrible 
And then we have the girls setting up a surprise baby shower for Janet. And I'm snoring. It is kind of funny, though, because Janet's like talking about how she hopes that her birth's going to be super easy and that the baby just okay. slides out. Sure. And all these women are talking about like their horrible births and their anus is rupturing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, fucking stuff. losing blood, losing <laughs> consciousness, I almost died. I thought that was hilarious. And Janet's like getting pissed off oh, at them. Can you guys just chill out a little bit? <laughs> well, yeah. but Janet, like, don't go into it thinking that it's going to be easy peasy. Yeah, but I mean, you know, she probably needs a little bit of reassurance. Sure. But like you get around a lot of mothers, you know, <laughs> and women who have given birth and you open those floodgates and you're going to hear a lot of stories. Yep. Yeah. 100%. And then we have some fantasy party that they set Girl. up for everybody. I think Janet was the one that set it up where everybody has to dress up as each other's sexual fantasies. I thought so, although her husband showed up as a hot dog <laughs> and she showed up as a vanilla beans. I know, like, what? Like, okay. <laughs> I don't understand. Um, and this is where we have Danny dressed up as Jamie from Outlander yeah. and his wife Nia is dressed up as herself because the ranch costume didn't come in time because his most favorite thing is ranch. Like, what the fuck? We have Brittany showing up as I think a hockey cheerleader yeah. and Jax is a hockey player yeah. on stilts. <laughs> I didn't get it. Like an NBA player or something like that? Uh, something. I don't know. And then we have Jesse showing up as Harry Styles slash Elton John <laughs> and Michelle yeah. sauntering in looking like a fucking baddie. I know. Looking like a hot mama in yeah. her lingerie and in her jacket. She looks like a million bucks. And the party begins. Yes. And poor Danny is drunk. Shit faced, honey. F. Wasted. Oh my God. And just keeps drinking yeah and Nia you know being a sweet lady she's like I want him to have fun you know maybe he's having too much fun but like it's fine like he can get drunk we're all hanging out at the at the villa but then Michelle like as they all sit down and have dinner Michelle comes up with the bright idea to ask Danny and Nia about their living situation and moving to Santa Clarita which is already like a hot button topic for them both because they disagree on it but i'm like why are you bringing this up when danny's drunk as fuck right why are we talking about this but this activates danny it does and they start talking about their various and sundry reasons for wanting to live in the valley versus wanting to live in santa Clara. and i don't care no nope. um and then we get to the point though where for some reason and i can't tell you why jesse tells danny that he's a bad actor yeah and of course danny's trade is acting yeah he is, in fact, a thespian. Yes. <laughs> and so being thin-skinned, which is what we learned about Danny in the last two episodes. Yes. Like, he's a fucking thin-skinned motherfucker. Yeah. This thin-skinned person gets butt hurt. Yeah. And starts to unravel in a variety of different directions. And yep. it seems to be focused around the real estate stuff. But, like, he's popping off. Jax is, like, trying to support him. And yep. Brittany's just talking over. I gotta hate her voice. I know. I hate, shut, shut your voice. Seriously. It's terrible. And there's pandemonium at the table and Danny's trying to articulate whatever his dumb opinion is and Nia's trying to stop him. Yeah. She's like, Shh, you don't you're need drunk. To yell. It's okay. Stop talking. Chill out. It's fine. And Danny is like, no, I want to say what I want to say. I'm a man. And she's just like, okay, well, but like, do you, well, maybe we could talk about this in private. This is like about our life. We don't need to be having this conversation at the dinner table. And he starts cursing. She was telling him to shut up. And eventually she says something to the group. Like, this is a private conversation between me and my husband. So let's shut the fuck up and stop talking about it, please. And thank you because he's drunk and he's not in his right mind. Right. <laughs> and then I think that's when he says under his breath kind of to her, he's like, you fucked me over there. Yeah. That's what he says. And she's like, don't be cursing at me. Don't on be TV. using the F word. We're on TV. Right chill out and i mean that's totally fair mm -hmm. he was hella drunk though like yeah he says a couple two three things to her and she reminds him a couple of times like we're on tv you're yeah. talking to me like that your beloved wife mm -hmm. on tv so you might want to check yourself before you wreck yourself yep and so danny ultimately is sent from the table 
to go downstairs and sleep it off. <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> go to bed, Danny. Yeah. You're showing your ass. He is. And he does admit to it in his talking head. He's like, yeah, I, I got really crazy. I said some things I shouldn't have. You know, I was drunk. And like a lot of people, to be fair, on Reddit are actually like defending him and saying mm-hmm. like, you know, we're seeing a couple who's like new parents. They've got three little babies in a condo. They're trying to figure out life. Like that's a stressful time in your life as a parent which i don't know yet because i ain't got no kids okay uh, much to my chagrin i uh, know yeah. <laughs> do you i'm working on it okay. i know <laughs> well i did have a dream about having a baby last night boy or girl a girl oh my gosh really? we adopted her and she was so cute really yeah. oh yeah so sweet. they come to you in dreams you know, know beforehand to let you know that they're en route that they're making their way through the ether down I into know. your uterus or somebody else's i know she was a little baby we adopted she was three years old and she <gasps> oh was t- talking and blabbing oh. and she got to pick her name it was really cute oh did she tell you what her name was I woke up right at in that the time. Dream? Oh gosh, yeah. that's great. Oh, I know. We're getting a grandchild. I know. Not to. We're working um, on it. <laughs> detour the conversation. <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, a lot of people on Reddit were talking about how, like, you know, if you were a young parent and you had your toddlers or whatever, like, do you want those years of your life broadcasted on TV? No, because you probably weren't perfect. You probably were being stupid and making an ass of yourself because you're trying to figure out how to be a parent and he's under a lot of stress and all this mm-hmm. stuff so i thought that was nice because after last week everybody's yeah. shitting on danny yeah. and now everybody's coming back to well yeah him. that's shockingly reasonable for reddit I know. and i think that's um that's that's the right way to look at it like he's just having a moment it happens to be on television let's yep. cut a little slack he's under a lot of pressure so is nia 100 percent. and he's in a toxic fucking friend group with all mm-hmm. these God. stupid losers yes. oh but what, what, before we move on though i yeah. did like how jason said that he noticed how nia when shit starts to get real in the friend group tends to say oh my babysitter needs us to come home or oh god i gotta go downstairs and i gotta nurse the babies or always uses her babies and her marriage in order to get out of these types of situations so this is not going un noticed by the friend group and i wonder if that maybe next year is going to come up because as we have discussed previously like nia you're going to have to figure it out like yeah. this group is about drama right there's gonna be drama so you can't keep checking out with your babies just to avoid it right like if you want the money from bravo you're gonna have to mm-hmm. bring some kind of drama yep. even if it's fake but like you're not you're being a nice mom like mm-hmm. you're being respectful right and you're being mature and unfortunately that doesn't work for bravo. no it doesn't <laughs> and i'm actually really glad though that somebody called it out because yeah. we've been saying it and other people have been saying it too like nia like Come on, honey. Right. Like, you know what you signed up for, girl. And then it's the next day. Danny slept off his alcohol. Everybody (laughs) sobered up. Apparently, Michelle and Jesse fucked that morning. Wow. She had her eyes closed. Why? She wouldn't look at him. Mm. She disassociated. She went to another astral dimension, darling. (laughs) Playing with the fairies. Oh, God. He got his nut on, but I'm just like, why? I mean, you've just resolved within yourself that you're going to have to divorce him. So why are you giving him false hope by having sex with him? I know. But something about it must have been really bad because he noticed that she was dissociated. And this is when he begins to bring up, once again, the sexy pictures that Michelle has allegedly sent to other people. Now, he don't want to look like a fool. Yeah. And she's been telling him, of course, they didn't send sexy photos. No, I'm just networking with people. You know how we do it. Sure, Jan. But now he wants to get some additional information and clarity, post not clarity, yeah. and find out whether this is really going on because he would feel really stupid if she was lying to him. And she's like, well, what do you mean? Uh, I would I never do that. I told you I wouldn't do that. Do we think she's done that? Oh, I think she's totally done that. Yeah, all up in the... um. Oh. Yeah, the vag- the vag- the, v- the vagina. Yeah, totally. Because that's canal. how people take sexy pictures. All up in the yeah, that's the how part. they do it. Get yeah. in there and <laughs> yeah. send that picture. She is sending pictures. This is what I believe. Oh, of course. Oh, up in the, <laughs> get in the vagina. Of course. Yeah. Especially if what Jesse is saying is true that she doesn't let him see her phone at all and she's always hiding it. So suspicious. I mean, don't be suspicious. Don't. don't being suspicious that's suspicious girl yes. come on like i'm not one to like look at my wife's phone or nothing like that but if i had a suspicion mm-hmm. she would let me see her phone She'd yeah be like, sure 
If you or you're worried, here you go. Right. And, and there mean, would be nothing. My husband's phone has my thumbprint. Yeah. And same with his for mine. Like I have no problem. Go through everything that you need to go through. Right. So the minute that you're hiding your socials and your phone, that is a red flag. Not that doesn't mean that she is doing anything. And some people like really value their privacy in that way. And I can respect it. But like given the context. Yeah. I believe she's cheating. Oh, 100%. I believe she's a cheating asshole. Yep, she is a cheating asshole. And she's lying to our faces. That's why I wish we had the reunion so people could call it out and be like, girl, here's the receipts. Mm-hmm. But we ain't going to do that. And then she tries to turn it around and say Kristen is cheating on Luke. Right. She's like, oh, no, Kristen's only spreading that about me because she's cheating on Luke. And I'm like, okay. So now we're spreading more rumors? Yeah, like- she's just trying to firebomb over there to get the heat off of her i don't i don't believe that for a minute me neither Mm -mm. and then we have britney talking to janet for some reason about her marriage with jack okay dissenting opinion Mm. i didn't hate janet in this scene and you know i don't like her you know i don't like janet but I thought that she was very well reasoned. She didn't come in and just be like, oh my God, Jack's a fucking asshole. Let's kill him. Okay. This is Earl got to die. Yeah. She didn't do any of that. She's just like, well, you know, like, I know you guys want to stay together. I know divorce isn't an option, but like, maybe you guys should communicate, go to therapy. Like, she's trying to help Brittany, I think. Yeah. And this is where we learn from Brittany that, um, actually, divorce is an option. It is 100% a path that we could take. Much. Uh, to the opposition of what Jax is saying about this. I know, yeah. which I thought that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what, girl? More power to you. Like, leave this dork. He hates you anyway. Go get you a man that loves your curves and loves yes. your body and your yuck, yuck. Yes. For real. And then we have <laughs> Danny and Nia going on a walk and they're talking about his drunk escapades the Mm -hmm. night before Mm -hmm. and she's like i just want to talk to you about like moving to santa clarita and blah 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 she's like just want you to know how i'm so emotionally tied to la for some reason which i'm just like ew (laughs) i like why why do you want to live in hollywood and raise a kid out in those streets like there's an entire like microculture there like these are this people born and raised in california well i can see it and i have friends there and i've visited and it's very fun and can be beautiful you're so hateful for (laughs) california i'm just trying to acknowledge and rep the raccoons out here from california from southern california i know that we have them well yeah i I mean there's beaches there's mountains there's fucking great food look there's a lot going for southern california i love southern california i've got family in southern california i'm not dogging on that i'm just dogging on la specifically she's so tied to san francisco la and well (laughs) i (laughs) just right san francisco used to be cool yeah but like no she's like just like so attached to this area and she's explaining her feelings to danny and danny's like yeah no i totally understand and they have like a very nice like mature conversation i thought it was great because nia made a point to tell danny like thank you for always wanting to take care of me like i really feel how much you want to protect me especially during this season of postpartum depression and all of the things that i'm going through i can really feel that you're there for me but at the same time i need you to take care of you like you deserve to be happy too and i just want to make sure that you're okay and i thought that is just such a fantastic display of what a partnership actually yes. is in stark contrast to every other couple that we're watching on this show. I know. Just like a beautiful way to have the discussion. And you notice she didn't like hammer him for his cringy, embarrassing behavior the night before. Like yep. she's a nurturer and he's a protector and nurturer. He is. And I loved them. I love them too. I'm still like, you guys are a power couple. Like even if he's like, saying some curse words while he's drunk like i mean who hasn't done that (laughs) girl come on i mean who hasn't been like that i think they're great and i love i do love that they're on this show because they do contrast all of the other horrible marriages Mm -hmm. and horrible couples it's just like so great yeah and then we have the friday gentleman's lunch with jesse and Jax and some other randos i just hate how jesse feels the need to put on all these airs and he talks about like previous lunches being five courses and costing twenty thousand dollars and i'm like okay i don't care wealth whispers honey Mm -hmm. wealth whispers new money 
roars yes like shush like stop Mm -hmm. he's so pompous yeah but he's like doing this because it's like some networking thing i guess and he brings jacks over there only to criticize jacks and britney's marriage i'm just like what the fuck dude okay another dissenting opinion because when we see jesse talk on the couch in his interstitial about how he wished he had somebody sit him down two years previously who kind of could see the signs and the writing on the wall like he wished somebody would have done that for him so that's why he's trying to talk to jacks like i understood his reasoning and i think he says something like those that cannot do teach right Right. so he's trying to teach jacks what he has learned through his own process but like of course jacks being an absolute lummox and a buffoon can only say that you know he's got a terrible marriage and probably worse than mine so why should i be listening to him but like i i do think there's some validity to jesse being able to clock what's going on understand that his own marriage is falling apart and reaching out a hand to help his friend he is not helped though by his condescending attitude yes. and the way he tries to speak with such authority like you actually don't have that authority you have experience and so you can come into the conversation and say hey let me just tell you what happened to me this is what i did i really don't want that to happen to you that's experience Experience, but when you come in with authority and tell somebody who they are and what they're doing wrong, when you have blown up all of your shit, miss me with that. Yes. That's what I thought was so silly to me because both of these guys are so similar. Like they're both egotistical pieces of shit that treat their women like crap. And they are quick to criticize literally everyone else, but can't look themselves in the mirror and look at their own flaws and everything. So that's what I thought was annoying with Jesse. But I do understand the sentiment like of him just trying to be a friend to Jax and Jax is being so resistant mm-hmm. to it. I mean, he is like so prideful in this sham of a marriage. Like mm-hmm. there's no pride in having a horrible, terrible marriage. Like I, even if you have the marriage label, like I think Jesse asks Jax, like, would you let Brittany leave if she wanted to leave? And he was like, no, I wouldn't. She's Mm -hmm. never going to leave me. Well, and as Jason tells us, like, you can't stop her. She has power in the situation. She has rights in the situation. And if she wants to leave you and or divorce you, she has every right to do so. And you're not going to be able to stop her. But it hasn't occurred to Jax yet that Brittany would ever do that. Because Mm -hmm. how could she ever find better than me? Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I hate Because he believes that. Yeah. That's how he sees his wife. And she can find better than you. Yeah. By throwing a rock into a swamp, she can find better (laughs) than you. For real. It's so embarrassing to me. And then that's like the end of the episode. So next week's the season finale. We have Jack's bar finally opening, but it's not really his bar. It's just his name on there. Although. What? Did you watch the after show? No. When he was talking to the Toms about the bar, like he the way he spoke about it is getting a 50% interest in this bar. Like, so he gets, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, the way it sounded was he gets 50% of the profits off the bar that he did not invest in. He talks about how these guys who invest in restaurants and bars came to him and presented him with the deal. He took it to his lawyer. His lawyer's like, you fucking hit the lottery. This is a great deal. Do it. And he's sitting next to the Toms, of course, who've got Schwartz and Sandys, and they're like still not making a profit. And they've put, I don't know, close to a million dollars into that joint. And Jax is allegedly just making money hand over fist in this bar, which I think was was pretty funny to watch because wow. as he's talking about his good fortune, Tom and Tom are just squirming and looking at their watches and like they're very uncomfortable because oh. they're losers that's amazing yeah okay i do kind of like the competition between like jacks and the toms and stuff because it seems like the toms look up to jacks for some reason yeah like all the guys look up to jacks like he's so fucking cool in his skinny jeans and his washed up like bald spots (laughs) so embarrassing and then we also have zach and Kristen calling out janet's gossiping ass bitch well (laughs) bitchness but um I noticed as I watched it, because I rewound it, that they seem to be saying it to everybody but Janet. Like, Janet isn't actually in the group when they're saying it. So I'm not sure if Janet is actually going to get confronted. Although we do see Jason 
getting in Zach's face. Like, don't you talk about my wife like that. Okay, now you've got a pair. And Zach's like, whatever, dude. Yeah, like, bye. Yeah. Your wife's crazy. She sucks. She's terrible. I think they call her out for being an instigator or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Michelle saying that her and Jesse need to divorce. Yes, we know. Mm -hmm. And then Brittany leaving and Jack's fake crying on the couch as if he's so unhappy which i'm yeah. just like you're not i don't know i i really don't know what makes Jax tick i think like he has sentimental values about himself like he wants to have values in something like his child and his marriage and his family but like he doesn't actually have those values mm -hmm. and doesn't know how to be solid in them and so he's always going to default to being an absolute bastard and an asshole and that's sad but like get some fucking therapy well and he's gonna be like well she left so i can fuck whoever i want i can do as much blow as i want i can live in the house she's living in an airbnb i'm not leaving the house you could just see how difficult he's going to be and again i say not to be a broken record i apologize but like how he has been setting up this entire season like the fact that Brittany is an alcoholic according to him and how she's got a problem mm -hmm. and so maybe she's an unfit mother maybe she's unsafe to mother Cruz and so this could all be going toward a custody agreement or a custody battle which would call into question whether he really doesn't believe into divorce if he's been planning this the entire mm -hmm. time I don't know that's what I'm thinking too like maybe he's just trying to side with Jesse or the rest of the group and be like yeah I think divorce is wrong but I'm like You've been waiting for this, I feel mm -hmm. like. I, I don't think you like Britney at all. You're no. fucking miserable with her. You don't want to no. fuck her. So it's like, why not just get divorced? So that way you don't have to continue cheating on her. Because I think mm -hmm. he's been cheating on her this whole entire time. So I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see it, though. Yeah. So we're going to be wrapping it up. There won't be any reunion. We have one more episode. And then starting next week, yeah, we are going to be covering Unexpected on oh TLC. God. A bunch of um, them ho-ass teenagers getting Teenage pregnant and knocked up. Eh. Getting knocked up and fighting and stuff. Can't wait. I can't wait for that. We're going to be covering Unexpected. We're also going to be finishing up The Valley. And then we're also going to be doing Sister Wives Rewind. Yes. And so we know that a lot of our core audience is into the sister wives stuff and so we're going to be coming back with a vengeance with a lot of commentary yeah about everything that has happened in the sister wives universe since last we met on that topic so we'll be getting into that and i think season four yep of the franchise and we're gonna have a lot of fun like the yeah. train keeps on going honey to Girl. the destination chug -a -chug -a -chug -a -chug -a -chug endless chug -a -chug amount of trash so much trash to eat mm. there's a reason i'm fat it's because Same. i love to eat trash yes girl now is there anything else we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review five. It really helps us grow the process five. thank you so much we will be back next week to do all the things i already told you about that we are doing and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out. bye bye guys